Hello and welcome back. And this week we're continuing in our theme on transformation. Last week we heard some incredible messages about how we are transformed and how we need to continually transform ourselves in the renewing of our minds and our thinking. But the reality is when we know Christ, his spirit comes and lives in us. And we're told we are a new creation. We're told that his victory over sin and death becomes our victory. We have forgiveness and we have the power to live a new life. Transformation, metamorphosis, a miraculous change occurs. A bit like when Steve Rogers became Captain America. Now, you might have seen this theme. Steve Rogers is just a puny individual who signs up for this program, the Captain America program. And he gets put into this machine and the dials get turned up. And things start to happen. There's a bright glow. The energy has been, something is happening in there. And they're saying, shut it down, shut it down. And he's going, no, keep it going, keep it going. And they turn the dials up to maximum. And then everything cuts out. And they open up the machine and Captain America comes out. A complete transformation. Now I know I'm a new creation. I heard that last week. But why is it that I so often feel not like the Captain America after this change, but like the Steve Rogers? Why is it that often I feel like I'm taking two steps forwards and one step back, or even one step forward and two steps back? It's like I have these moments of victory and breakthrough in my life only to fall victim, foul, give in to temptation only to respond in a really negative way, only to let my anger bubble out when it mustn't do, only to see my selfishness really come to the surface. And it seems like that I am just not being able to become the person I long to be. It's a bit like the video of this sheep. Just when we feel we've been set free and we're making progress, we go and Fall right down again. Do you ever feel like that? And if this is you, well, Paul has some encouraging verses for us in Romans 7, 18. It says, I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. You can hear the exasperation in his voice. And perhaps that is how you're feeling today. Perhaps there's things that you would just love to change. What would you change about yourself if you could today? Has there been something that you have not been able to shake free from? Something that you know isn't right? Is there something which God is calling you to do, but you just are afraid to pick it up and run with it? The Christian life is all about transformation, but sometimes it's hard to make those changes. Well, today we're going to think about the process of change. And actually, sometimes our confusion here comes with our lack of understanding about the process of how this happens. So first of all, we're going to think about, actually we need to, as Stephen reminded us last week, have the right thinking. Understand who we are and everything that God has given us and everything that he's done for us. In Christianese, the big word for this is justification. We've been given everything we need and we need to take hold of the promises God has given us. But then... We need to actually act. Therefore, in view of God's mercy, Romans 12 says, looking back on the last 11 chapters in Romans, everything God has done for you, therefore, in view of that, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. We need to commit. We need to say, God, I am going to trust you with this and I'm going to follow you. Let it be your will and not mine. We need to commit. We need to 
act. We need to lean in to what God is telling us to do in our lives. We need to become intentional. We need others around us to help us with this. We need others that we can talk to and confide in and be accountable to. And this whole process of change, we, we are justified, but Jesus says we become sanctified. We become more and more like him. And this is the next thing we're going to look at, how actually change is an ongoing process. We are works in progress, which God is faithfully working in. And finally, we are going to be glorified. We are going to become fully like Christ wants us to be. A process of what God has done, what God is doing and what God is going to do. And we're going to think about change in these terms. So let's start off with thinking about who we are, our right thinking. So firstly, we need right thinking. You see, we are flawed in our thinking. I do not see things as God sees things. And I need his truth, renewing my mind, to see things right. Ah, so I just got myself some new running shoes. I still smell a little new. But about 10 years ago, I stopped running completely because my knee was starting to make crunching noises and I just said, I can't run anymore. I, I, won't, I, won't be, I can't run. And people say, oh, it's, you know, I've been for a run. I say, oh, I, I remember when I could run, but I can't now. My knees, my knees are too bad. I can't run. But then about five years later, I thought, I'll, I'll just give it a go. I'll, I'll just have a go. And I, I went for a gentle run and I started gently and I did lots of reading and I protected my knee and I strengthened my knee up by doing 5k and then I went up to 10k and then I went up to 15k and I found I could run. I found my knees didn't hurt. I, I strengthened the muscles up nicely around my knees and I was running fine. The truth I believed completely limited what I was able to do. And it's the same with understanding the truth about God's power and victory over sin limits us in our attitudes to how we think we can overcome this. Because perhaps this morning you are feeling defeated, you are feeling wound, ground down, you're feeling cynical, you're feeling tired, things haven't changed and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried. You cannot try anymore. And these things are still with you, weighing you down, tangling you up. You have not been able to change what you wanted to change. There are things in all of us that we would long to change and we cry out to God for it. But we need to be reminded of the truth that Jesus has conquered death and sin. Romans 3, he's conquered sin and set us free from sin. Romans 6, we used to be slaves to sin, but we're no longer slaves to sin. We're slaves to righteousness. Philippians, I can do all things through God who strengthens me. John 10, he wants us to have life and life to the full. This isn't a life where we're still held back and weighed down by sins that ensnare us and capture us. It is a changed life. But we need to take hold of these truths and believe them. Do you know what? In 1863, Lincoln abolished slavery in the United States. The day after, there were still slaves. Why? Because they hadn't heard this truth. Because they hadn't believed this truth. Or because they weren't allowed to put this truth into practice because of the slavery that continued. We have to take hold of the truth and believe in it. But the thing is, we're so quick to forget. We're so quick to forget the power of God at work in our lives. We see this in the children of Israel. That God would do an amazing, miraculous thing. And just a few months later, they would be 
despondent, despairing, God, where are you? They would forget all that God had done for them. And we are just the same. We're so quick to forget. I also love the Israelites when they were going through the wilderness and God provided for them with the manna that they had to collect it daily. They had to feed daily. He didn't give them a whole week supply at once. They had to daily go to him. And it is the same with us feeding on God's truth to renew our minds daily. We have to go and be reminded of who God is, of what that means for us and who we are, that his victory is our victory. His power has become our power, that we can live with Christ in his power. He is with us in our lives. As uh, 2 Peter, I think, says, or 1 Peter, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. We need to refresh and remind ourselves of this daily. We need to be going to him daily to keep our minds renewed in truth. It's not about how much we know, it's about letting the truth bounce around inside of us, feeding on truth and letting God's spirit really take hold of that and plant it in our lives. It says meditate on the Lord there, night. meditate is to mull on it, to lean into it, to let it cut through our thoughts and intentions, our deceitful hearts sometimes, let it cut through that and reveal the truth inside of us. And then we need to act on it. When we do this, change happens. God's spirit works this truth in our lives. And when it comes from within, it changes every area of our lives. When I learn to be generous, I'm not just generous with my family, I'm generous at work, I'm generous with strangers, I'm generous in every area because that is worked into my life. When God changes us from the inside out, the change is genuine. When I was growing up, uh, this guy, I remember, kept a car in a garage, in our garage, and it was a Ferrari. A Ferrari. You looked at it, it had all the lines of a Ferrari. But it wasn't a real Ferrari. It was one of those kit cars, sort of fiberglass car. And it looked like a Ferrari, but it had a Ford Escort engine in it. It didn't sound like a Ferrari. It didn't drive like a Ferrari. It just wasn't the genuine thing. If we do not allow God to change us and we're part of a church and part of a group, we start to change the outside to fit in. We're very good at fitting in. And, and this is genuine. We want, to, we want to change. We want to do good. We try hard. But this isn't God's power working with us. And we just fail. We do good. We try harder. And we fail. Chip Ingram does a fantastic series on Right Now Media where he really looks at this. 12 sessions about how we're transformed by God's truth. Please watch it. He says it's so much better. We do good. We try hard. We fail. And then what do we do? We start faking it. Because actually, we don't want to be failures in a group of people. We don't want them to see our failure. So we start to pretend, we start to be a certain way around the church community, but we're not that in the other areas of our week. We're not that with other groups. We're like that on Sunday mornings because we do good, we try hard, and we fake it, we cover things over because we're embarrassed by it because it's not changing. We've got to let God genuinely work those things in our lives. We've got to lean in with obedience We've got to live a life wanting to please God and coming to him and let him genuinely change things inside of us so we can start to change with the actions on the outside. This next section in Christian speak is called sanctification. We have been transformed and we are going to continually to be transformed. Present tense. This is an ongoing thing that is going to happen to you for the rest of your life. Because this is what God does. There's no such thing about being a Christian and not be transformed. Continually be transformed. He who begun a good work in you is going to be faithful to complete it. So this is an ongoing thing for the rest of your life. It's a bit like a dimmer switch, you know, when you go into a room and, and the light is low and you, you, or your eyes adjust and you can start to make out big things in the room. 
there are big things in your life that, that God is going to want to transform and sort out, things that are obviously wrong. And then as you slowly turn up a dim, dimmer switch, you start to make out other things, smaller things that become into detail. You know, when we're transformed, it's very hard um, because actually uh, it's hard to know what to change, isn't it? It's hard to know what to start off with. But the great news is that you have a personal trainer. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He gradually and slowly brings things to our attention. And it can seem overwhelming. What, 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 what shall I do first? How shall I start? But the Holy Spirit will just bring things in you, convict things in you that will need to be changed. And, and God's word will reveal these over time. But here's the rub now, is that, let me go back to my running illustration. I've got the clothing, I've got everything I need, but I have to do it. I have to actually go out and run. I have to actually put this into action. And it's the same in our Christian lives, you know. To be honest, there are a very few times where I actually feel like going out. Um, in fact, if someone says to me, are you running later? And I said, oh, I'll see how I feel. That means a no, because I generally don't feel like doing it. There, it's always a better thing to do. I'd rather watch TV or sit looking out the window or have a coffee or anything, even do the washing up sometimes, particularly if it's raining outside, anything. And this is where we need to realise that our Christian lives is acting in faith and obedience, not on how we feel. We will not always feel like doing the right thing and stepping forward, but this is what we're called to do now. There are some big, strong phrases used in the, in the, in the verses that we're basing this study on. Romans 12.1, Therefore I urge you, in view of God's mercy, Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's a huge term. That means saying, no longer me, but you. No longer my will, but your will. I surrender my desires for your desires. Galatians 2.20 is another key verse. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. But I've been crucified. The life I live is no longer mine. It's yours. And that's what we're saying. I trust you with my life. I trust you. Your desires, I want to become my desires. And there's things about my desires that I'm going to have to let go. Acting can be so hard. You're never going to feel like sacrificing things that are important to you and giving them up to God and letting him have control of those things. It's an act of faith and obedience. But the more we do that, the more we see God's power and God's fruit happen in our lives and those around us. We went uh, on a holiday when I was younger to Centre Parks. And Centre Parks has a log flume, well, a, a sort of a people flume. So you, you start in their swimming pool and there's loads of like a, 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 a flow of water a flume of water that takes you down different slides and out and about outside and there is a strong current and you get towed along with the current and you start inside, you go outside the pool, you come back and it's a lot of fun. But we decided that our challenge was to do this backwards. And this was quite a challenge for two reasons. One, the flow of water was very strong and sometimes you had to literally climb up the waterfall bits. And the other thing was there was lifeguards who were continually watching out, which we had to avoid, otherwise we would get told off. It was exceptionally difficult going against the current. We live in a world where the current is not of God. There's many great things in this world, many great things in culture. You look around, you see God's fingerprints over a lot of stuff, and you think, wow, what an amazing God we have. But we all know there are many things in this world which are not right. And actually, we have... The Bible is very clear. We have to choose, are we living in the values of this world or are we living in God's values? We can't do both. I remember Helen talking about this and she used that picture of having a foot on a boat and having the foot on the shore and the boat is moving away from the shore. You can't stay in both and God says the same. You have to choose, you have to decide who you're going to model your life of. Because actually as humans, we're imitators. We model our lives off the things around us. 
Um, and there's two models. One is God's truth and one is the world's truth. God's values or the world's values. John Stott, uh, uh, a famous preacher talks about this really well and he's describing the difference that we have here. He says, do you know what the world says? Grab what you can. But God's word says it's better for you to give than to receive. The world says repay evil for evil, but God's word says overcome evil with good. The world says sex is for fun and enjoyment without commitment. The word God's word says, sex is for love, enjoyment with commitment. The world says, greatness is measured by achievement. The word says, greatness is measured by service. The world says, you're number one, look after yourself and your own interest. The word says, seek first God and his righteousness. There are big differences in how we live our lives, depending on who we serve. And God says, you can only serve me or the world. You have to choose. This is really comes to light in the book of Joshua. Now, Joshua is a key character in the Old Testament. In Joshua 24, he's now 110 years old. Joshua has served with Moses and shown that he is faithful. Joshua then led the Israelites and he led them. And they, do you remember the amazing battle of Jericho where they conquered, the battle, the, conquered Jericho by walking around the city? He had faith and love in, in God and commitment. Um, and now Joshua is old and he's got the Israelites together and he's going to give them these instructions. He says, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your forefathers um, serve beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Choose for this day who you will serve. He doesn't say you, you can choose to serve, um, by this he means worship, nothing with your life. That is not an option. We all will worship something. It's in our DNA. We all will imitate and, and draw near and copy and prioritise something in our lives. Worship is what we do. That's how we're, that's how we're wired. And you have to choose what you're going to worship. I love this about choosing the gods of your forefathers or choosing the land in which you're, you live or choosing God. And um, I'm very aware as a parent that I will pass things on to my children and I have received things from my own family. But the things I pass on to my children, some of those things will be God's values and some of those will be just bad attitudes that I'm still working through, bad habits, um, perspectives on things which aren't right yet because I'm still a work in progress and there is so much for me to do. And you know what, when they go older, I want them to look at their lives and say, I don't want to choose to just to do the things that my father thought were important or, or take on what his, what his, some of his bad attitudes were. I want to put everything towards God and choose what God wants me to do. We inherit things in our families. We inherit worldviews and attitudes to things which aren't always right. And we need to sacrifice and give them up to God and be renewed in our thinking and say, actually, how does the Bible say I need to live? That's what I want my boys to do when they're older. And hopefully when they look at my life, they can see that I have changed. They can see how God doing that for me has changed me. But he then says, well, you can choose to worship the, uh, the gods, the Amorites, the gods of the Amorites, the land in which you live. And we live in a world which we can so easily be conformed to. The casual attitudes to sex, the pursuit of money, wealth, status, the, the, your identity is all about the work that you do. Whatever some of these values are, we are consumed, we, we consume these. This is the air we breathe. And it just makes it so important to realise how much we need to put God's truth in us daily. Because all the screen time that we have now, on your phones, on the TVs, everything that goes in is not of God. There are different values than God's values and we need God's truth to come in and shape us so we can live right in the world. We're told to live in the world and not of the world. Living in the world is living out God's love and light into the places where we live and work and have our being. Living off the world is being conformed to those things. People should be able to look at us and say there is something different about you. There is something different. Well, you are like a light in this place. What is it that is different 
there is there is a different drum beat going on you're walking to a different rhythm a different pace what is this and it's god's truth coming through us so it's so easy to get distracted in life it's so easy to take on other things and and all of a sudden rather than god as our master and we serve him in our work or serve him in our relationships it's so subtly those things can become the things that we worship and it happens so easily and so subtly. Satan is so cunning in how he does this, how he distracts us, how he takes our eyes off putting God first. Carl Eidemann has a series on right now media. I'll keep dropping these things in because if you're intentional about wanting to keep growing your faith, you need to be doing these kind of things by yourself at home and, and feeding on this kind of stuff. And if Carl Eidemann, again, it's on Right Now Media. Right Now Media is a resource that the church pays for. It's like Christian Netflix. It has loads of great teaching on there. And when I'm, when I'm preaching, I will highlight bits that you really should kind of like, could tune into if you want to take this further. He calls it Gods at War um, by Carl Eidemann. And it's a great series just looking at actually how, how easy it is for us to fall into worshipping things in this world and worshipping God and how subtly that can happen. And here's some questions. He says, if you just, just as, a, as, a, as a check, just as a, a reality check, he goes, what do you spend your time and money on? What do you worry about? Where do you go for comfort? Who are you trying to please? Where do you go for a pick-me-up when things are down? What do you use? It's, maybe it's shopping. Maybe it's eating. Maybe it's of relationships where what is it for you are these things becoming the gods in which you now worship it's a real challenge to us to be renewed in our minds and to be thinking about actually is god first and joshua says choose this day who you will serve as for me and my house we will serve the lord choose this day this is an active verb it's not a one-off choice it's every day you will need to choose who you're going to serve. It's every day, many times a day, you will have to consciously choose who you're going to serve. Because we live in a culture which is flowing the other way. And we're going to have to actively swim against that. It takes effort and it takes intentionality. Or if you're a gardener, there are weeds are always growing. They are always appearing and we have to continually weed. Some of you might have seen a documentary on Chernobyl. It was on about a month ago. Or seen a city which has been left and uninhabited and nature just takes it back. Unless you're constantly attending to a garden, nature will just grow back and, uh, and swamp the garden again. And so it is in our faith. Unless we're continually following God, we will soon get swept along by the culture around us. So thank you for joining me on this journey as we look at being transformed. And just remember that in your struggles that we have, in the bodies that we live in and in the world that we live in, there are struggles. But remember, firstly, hold on to the right truth of who you are, everything you've been given, the power that you have and the victory that you can have over sin in Christ. Perhaps in your small groups this week you can share stories about how you've experienced God's power and how God has changed you. This is a process that happens over time. How have you been changed over time in your journey with Christ? And secondly, be a Joshua. Take a stand. Choose to worship God in the land in which you are in. And be honest with yourselves. Where is your heart? Where is your treasure? What areas do you find it hard to put God first in and let go of and give to God? In your small groups this week, uh, talk about what struggles do you have living counterculturally in this world, living for God in this world? What opportunities do you have? What areas in which you live and work and have your being, what areas do you have opportunities to say, actually, this is something which needs God's loving touch in. It needs God's light in. God, help me to see things and bring in your imagination into the situations that, I am, uh, that I'm in. How can I bring love and light, your caring touch 
into some of the difficult situations in my work or in my, in my home or in the area that I live. So uh, have a great week. Next week we're continuing this. We're continuing this process of change. We're going to look at three things. We're going to look at how <clears throat> we need to be, uh, it's not all about trying, but it's about training ourselves to be godly. It's, it's about living not by ourselves in this struggle, but in a community. And what does it mean to have a caring community to help us change? And thirdly, <clears throat> excuse me, it's about having the right perspective of who God is. So join us next week as we continue this process. Um, and as we now go into the last song, I am just going to share with you uh, a passage from Psalm 139. And I'm going to ask us just as we draw near to God, let this verse ring in our ears. And it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. As we draw near to God, let's open up our hearts. God, may you encourage us in the ways that we need to be encouraged. May you challenge us in the things that we need to be challenged in. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you care so much for us. I thank you that you never give up on us. I thank you for the work that you are doing, you have done and will continue to do. Amen.